Welcome to the 5-8, where we discuss each of the week's five most fucked up topics for eight minutes each. So, five topics, eight minutes, two hosts, one guest, some singing, a lot of curse words, and as many cocktails as we deem necessary. LB, welcome. You're on mute, LB. Get yourself off mute. <laughs> How's that? There you go. Now we oh can hear you. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 I'm a pro. I think I'm we missed pro. some of the curse words just there. <laughs> no, uh, I was just saying welcome back, even though you were you were traveling a little bit this week, but not too far. Um, I think, yeah, I had two stuff. shows in a row where I wasn't home. Yeah. You were home. I, I know. Wasn't home. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't. I feel... I'm back by the fireplace, so it's good to see you. I like Happy the fireplace. Happy to be here. What you drinking? Same old, same old? Well, I'm home, so I'm drinking my standard Manhattan. Wonderful. Um, yeah. What are you drinking? I'm drinking. I'm home, so I'm drinking my standard diet tonic water and Rosie's lime juice. And I love it. Can I tell you that I have not had soda in like a week and a half? I'm very proud of myself. I think you did tell me that. And I, yeah, I, it's great. And I never thought I was a soda person. And something has happened to me. And I've become like a soda drinker. And I got to get off of it. It's really bad for you. I know, but I love it. Yeah, so you're know. doing great. I'm proud of you. I think it's 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 residue from the COVID. Um, I have hey. something to show you. I don't know if you knew this. Oh, yeah, this is kind of exciting. Um, let me just get let me just get to this here. Okay. Uh, there was a um, there's a new show on E Entertainment Network. I don't know if you knew this. No. And you predicted it. You you I predicted did? that this is was, yeah you did, and it's called. Uh, it's called Cinema Fashionista. Ah, oh. yeah, yeah. Where Kirsten Cinema comes out oh and she and she God. just she did she really greatest... wear that? She wore that and at Davos. You didn't see this? She wore this. I did not see this. It's a bunch of like middle-aged white dudes and her dressed like this on the stage. And I think she With high those fives glasses? somebody. I kind of like the glasses, but I don't know. I'm telling you, they're going to give her those Davos, you know, bone saw people are going to give her money for a fashion line. It's and that's it. Happen. She'll go do that. And then uh, you've been saying this from from the get go that uh, that we're going to, you know, that's what that's how she's going to leave Washington. She's going to just jump to E. God help me. <laughs> you didn't really you didn't see that picture. I did not see this picture. Oh, that's good. That makes me happy. <laughs> OK, good. I haven't been paying attention. Um, I just, I, I have, and I haven't, I'm not, I can't take Twitter. I did have something that it's kind of related to some work that our guest had done, uh, that I'm just sort of just encountering, but I was on Twitter and someone decided to recirculate the, um, Pizzagate pics that got the guy with the child, right. Which I guess fall into the category of child pornography and, uh, and claim that this was what was on Hunter Biden's laptop to agitate, right? And also yep. because I'm sure they believe it because they're morons. And someone that I follow was dumb enough to reply to that. So it amplified it and pushed it into my timeline. Um, and I thought, what the hell am I doing on this platform? What am I doing on this? And with people who, if, if I'm following you, I'm trying to be, I try to be careful. I do follow a lot of people, but I try to be careful to not, you know, I never got into that. I'm going to follow the troll. You know, I, I try to follow people that I want to hear and learn from. And it's someone I'm following. I don't even know who it is because um, I got off it so quick because I don't want to be subjected to that is, you know, not not with it enough at this late stage of this game to know that you don't reply to something like that because it amplifies it. Then I figured I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing on this? I mean, I always feel that way, but really. So I, I honestly haven't really picked it up all that much. Yeah. Um, you haven't been missing much. You haven't. You did miss. Not. You did miss Kirsten Cinema in that game. I missed the exactly. woolly, the woolly mammoth. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, the nook of the north or whatever. So uh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to keep our guests waiting. I'm excited for our guests. So let's. Okay, uh, let's get to our guests. Should, all right, let's get into our segments. Hang on, let me get my timer. You got to get your timer out. I'm because, a little. I'm a know. little. I'm a little. And we're doing something. Do you want to tell everybody what we're doing tonight? We're doing something special well, tonight. Well, we're doing it. We're going to do our first ever members only after hours. So um, 
I, we're going to, when this is over, we're going to, um, you know, kind of do a whole new video uh, thing. So we'll see how that goes. Cause if we're, we're kind of winging it a little bit. It's live. Come on board. We've got a little game. We're going to play a little bit yeah. that we just, I just came up with actually someone else came up with it and gave it to me. That's what we're doing. All right. Yeah. Our timer is on. Let's go for this first one. Okay. So first um, last topic. week. Okay. Two weeks ago, you said, I, I'm not going to talk about oh. George Santos anymore. And then last week, uh, you did this entire monologue about George Santos and, um, excuse me, George Anthony Devolver Santos. Whoever. Katana. Katana. Yeah. Much. Uh, it's, she's a fabulous as Katana and much happier looking. Yeah. Yes. And I got called out rightfully so. Yeah. You rightfully called so. me out, everybody. Rightfully I'm, so. I'm but... actually thrilled at it. I'm thrilled. And th I don't even know who did it, but thank you. Because they kind of were like, right. They were like, the, their delivery was like, you said you weren't going to do this. <laughs> I was like, uh, oh my yeah. God, I did say I wasn't going to do this. And so then you and I talked about it. I'm like, why did I do that? Like, why did I switch? What was going on with me? And and I remembered, what, I think what I didn't say, I didn't really go back and watch it. I just caught that comment. Um, it's the Kevin McCarthy of it all. Yeah. That just... I, it's just intolerable to me. It's in another category now because I know we've been saying, and it's not a surprise. There is no bottom. They'll do anything for power grabs, blah, 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 blah. But I think it's a boom moment. Ooh, boom. I think it's a boom. I do. I, that's what struck me. That was what was so different. It's gone from just, Oh yeah. Okay. They're, they're throwing a shiny object out there. The press will chase and it all will go nowhere because no one will ask the questions. How did he get funded? Where did he really come from? Is he an intelligence operative? What are his, what do his parents do? What's up with his dumb? They don't even, they still can't tell us what his legal fucking name is. Journalists. They're just being, you know, so that was what I, I don't want to deal with that. I don't care about these chaos actors on that level in terms of how the press covers them. I don't want to add to that. But this is now it has moved into something else because he's so clearly a criminal. He's so clearly a fabulist. There's nothing acceptable about this guy whatsoever other than his vote. He doesn't necessarily even agitate the libs like Marjorie Taylor Greene. He's yeah. not great at that either. He's just embarrassing everybody. Um, least of all himself. He really embarrasses the Republican party more than he even embarrasses himself because He's so shameless because he's a fabulous and probably a psychopath. This is yeah. the cluster of personality disorders that, um, frankly, are very attracted to Twitter, but also just assume personas at, because this will get me the most attention if I had a death on night. And they get they get into that trauma and they love it and they want, you know, that's what he is on top of being a Ponzi schemer. And a, and a fraudster and connected to Russian oligarchs, dirty wallet and connected now. And now God only knows the breadth of and the scope of shit he was doing in Brazil um, and, and has been doing here. And Kevin McCarthy's like, well, unless he's a criminal, I mean, unless they charge him, I don't know what you want me to do about it. As if in Congress now, that's where the Overton window has moved. You've got to commit fragrant crimes and not only commit them in broad daylight for everyone to see, but now because of where everything is with our Justice Department, they have to be willing to go after you because they don't want to, because they don't want to go after corruption. It's to, oh, I don't want to look, we don't want to look political, thereby doing the most political act the Department of Justice can do, which is not pursue criminality because you're afraid of how it, you, it makes you look. Who gives a fuck about you? It's not about you. Catch the criminal, assholes. <laughs> I don't care. No one cares about you. We want you to catch the goddamn criminals. So and and not let people be above the law just because they were able to fraudulently get themselves into office because the party's not going to hold them to account. Their colleagues are going to do jack shit about it. Even the Dems. I haven't seen anybody come, a Dem come to the floor in the time that they've that Congress has been officially, you know, in in session, I haven't seen a, and they can a Democrat have they? Has anyone come to the floor and said we want this an ethics committee investigation on this guy? Anyone? 
I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, I don't know. So, I know that people have been talking about it. For that's sure. the that's the that's the switch that flipped for me. And thank you for for catching me on that, so that we could, I think, really talk about like let's think about this, right? Of is went, this a, is this a boom moment instead of just the next disgusto that's being trotted out by a disgusting party? Is this is this like if this guy stays in here? And also has committed all these crimes, and he's not going to be pursued. It's a, it's a, it's almost worse than Trump. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's almost worse than that because it's just degrading everything to a whole new, to a whole new level. And of course, he's on the small business committee. Right. <laughs> of course, he's on that because he knew how to run a Ponzi scheme. So let's stick him on there. Hell of yeah. a business. Okay, Steve B., thank you. Dan Goldman did file an ethics complaint. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. good. But thank I you. think that the thing that changed really in that week is that now it's real. Before it was just this kind of silly story. And now suddenly he's in the fucking house there with everybody else sitting next to um, Perjury Taylor Green and, and Jordan. Yeah. And, uh, and then it becomes real. It's like, oh my God, they're really going to put this guy here? Really? It's like well, watching we're a- um, there. I understand having him there so you can get the vote to be speaker. I can almost get that. But now you're going to put him on committees and defend him. You're going to go to the mattresses for this and watch it be that it is the trans. It is his um, drag uh, culture shows that it, that end this guy like that's everything's become such a culture war and a substanceless policy free jobless that the job only is the culture war that's all it fucking is is money raising money spending money stealing money and the culture war that's it that's it yeah and the fact that this fucking party has singled out that part of our of the american fabric this vulnerable sweet <laughs> like do no harm, really, like and and highly vulnerable uh, community, small community. Um, that's that they got singled out and they've been weaponized. And it's not, it's not the AR-15s, which is the real reason why there's kitty litter in schools to sop up the blood. That's why the kitty litter's there, everybody. It's not that. It's because we're gonna say that. Oh my God, this wokeness has driven. And kids have been groomed to the point to where they can now be cats. You know, it's it is going right through the trans community. It, there's no question about it. They're yeah. demonizing this community for power because boomer grandma and grandpas have are losing their goddamn minds that their grandkids coming in saying, I, you know, I don't want you to call me that anymore. This is my name now, or use this pronoun for me. It's they they know that they've got grandpa with that, and so it's it's sick. And then here he is doing that. And then all I'm seeing from the press around this new breakthrough story around this fraud is they're like, not that anything's bad with that. They're like so careful about it. It's like just talk about what a hypocrite he is. Just talk about how they literally want to kill this these people they want to kill our friends they 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 you know we had a mass shooting in a, at a drag club and idiot lauren bober because it was somewhere close to her district or in her district came out the next day in support of the shooter can they, they like what what is happening what is happening. So yeah, I think this guy, of course it's gone there with George, yeah. whatever the fuck his name is, you know, of course it's gone there. Yeah. There's everything's and, and there. It, Russian money, there. you know, everything is there. It gets, me, it gets me hot. I'm sorry. It gets me. I'm very, very, very discouraged at, um, with America in, uh, around this moment with this guy that's what switched he's now become the emblem of all of it yeah of all of what we're up against and it's stupid it's just dumb and it's so harmful 
It's so harmful. They're getting we people went, killed. We went from George Washington to George Santos. That's where we're at. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You said it. Yeah. Quite the fall. Yeah. Okay. All Let's right. That was that topic. That was good. So what a dragon is. Question. That was the first topic. What a dragon is. And God bless and our forget. viewers. The plague turns three. Um, yeah, yeah. It's three. It's three years now. Um I know COVID-19 was in 19, but it was really around now when three years ago in January, late January, 2020, when people started to become aware of it and it started to become a thing. Um, yeah. Three years gone, there's a million Americans dead, probably more than that, probably a lot more than that, that are, that are dead because of, um, you know, uh, people fudging the numbers and lying outright and whatever the fucking Ron DeSantis is up to, hiding shit in Florida and other places. Um, the, the, there's the Davos, uh, conference. They're like all wearing masks and pumping fucking filtrated air in there. And, yeah. uh, you know, Rupert Murdoch, one vaccinated. of the first fucking people on planet earth to get that vaccine. Okay. Nevertheless, just has his news anchors go on and lie about it over and over and over again. So what's happened is. I just because this is one of those things where I want to pull back because it's it's tough when you're in the flow of everything. Everything moves so fast. Sometimes it's necessary to pull back and go slow and really appreciate what's happening. We had a fucking plague. We had a pandemic, a plague in biblical terms, a pestilence that went through all over the world and killed a lot of people and made a lot of people very sick uh, that it didn't kill. Right. And. The powers that be in this country at the time, which were Trump and Pence and Kushner, made the decision to politicize this for votes. They thought wrongly and just ghoulishly that they could use the pandemic, um, the plague, to score political points. This is something Jared Kushner did willingly, not only in the early days of, uh, of the thing in 2020, but later on, too. Later yeah. on, when... Uh, when they already lost and the transition was coming and they said, should we give information about the pandemic to the Biden people? And he said, absolutely not. So what happens when you have an entire political party, including the fucking president of the United States, who, by the way, had COVID and looked like he was going to fucking drop dead, uh, but still lied about it. OK, when you have that disinformation from that level of government entering the discourse, it messes with people's minds. And now we have people that didn't wear masks. We have people that will not get vaccinated. We have people that will not get the boosters. We have people in my family who are like, well, I heard that if you got the vaccine, you couldn't get COVID and it turns out you can. And it's like, I don't think anybody said that or made promises like that. And the idea for the vaccine is that you don't like go on a ventilator or die, dumbass. And it, the stupidity of this is sort of off the charts. This is like if this were the Black Death in 1347, it would be like the government being like, you need to have more rats in your family's house. Rats are good. You know, like it's the exact opposite of what can save you. It's like saying, no, eat the rancid meat. Rancid meat puts hair on your chest. It's madness. It, yes. It's and madness. It's that's what it is. And it's an entire yeah. fucking political party that's perpetuating the madness. The media has been pretty OK about calling it out, but not not OK enough. And, mm. you know, I, I know that we can't walk and chew gum at the same fucking time in Congress. But would it have killed us to have a J6 level commission about the covid response, in the United States with Kushner and Pence and Trump on on the stand? Not that Kushner would, he'd just be, go to Qatar and that'd be the end of them or UAE or whatever. But like, yeah. let's find out what they did and where all the money went when these fuckers were monetizing this thing. So, because right now what I'm seeing is very, very rich people protecting themselves and Republicans especially, not only wanting voters to die, wanting their own voters to die. Because that's what happened statistically. Lots more, especially after the vaccines came out significantly more Republicans than Democrats and significantly more people in red states than blue are fucking dead, dead. And you could, you know, whatever these idiots say that, you know, these people, but like they're dead. They're never coming back. They're dead. 
because they chose to believe this fucking moron and this lying sack of shit that ran the country. And this is something that should be a universal thing. It is something that should penetrate the fucking bubble of Fox News, whose owner was one of the first people on earth to get vaccinated, and yet it has not. It has not. No. And I don't know if anything can at this point. No, it's if madness. Death can't. It's what madness. Can? Yeah. yeah. There, someone did a thread. I was telling you this earlier. Of, uh, and I don't. I couldn't check and see whether this is a real person or not. Um, because you never know. You know, it's like ugh, this, ugh, it's Twitter. Uh, but it was a few days back uh, before, like when I was like, ah, the childborn. Um. And she's like a New York, she said she was a New York school teacher and that there was, they are under sort of school, like they can't put a notice out to parents that they've had a COVID outbreak. It's become like that. Like we'll get the lice outbreaks, right? Like there's lice. So everybody knows. So you can kind of deal with it. And this is COVID, COVID where they get, and they're not sending the note. They can't send it. And the parents were figuring it out because they were all running into each other at the CVS or the Walgreens or whatever going, oh, oh, OK, you got COVID. And they pieced together. Oh, we have an outbreak in our school. Um, and then approached the teachers and the principal about it. And they're like, yeah, we can't tell anybody. I'm like, what? Is that real? I don't, I don't know, know if that's the, real the or not. The messaging is fucked up. That's the, crazy. The, the that's information nuts. from the CDC changes often, which is fine. Uh, because it has to, it has to be modified, but there's yeah. certainly the, the thing is going around. I mean, it's going around lots of people here in upstate New York. Lots of people have COVID. They just do. Yeah. And this new strain or whatever it is, is very, very contagious. And everybody, I think we just have plague fatigue, you know, yeah. uh, which is understandable, but like it's, that doesn't mean it's not a thing. So I don't know. Um, you know, uh, Biden, um, Biden got those vaccines out really fast to any American who wanted them. But, you know, you can lead the horse to water, but that's all you can do. At the end of the day, you have to make the decision to not let the rat into your house that is carrying the Black Plague flee on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and these I, I like all like, these mixed metaphors with animals and and. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> Let's keep that going. Okay. Yeah, we got an animal theme going here. Maybe I think. Okay. I think uh, we'll see with the. Uh, amount of Did you hit the thing? Are we? I, I'm done. I, I uh, it's 39 seconds left. Ah, I'm getting done, good. Really? I'm getting a my inner timer of eight minutes is is good. Yeah, it's, it's great. I don't have any other sense of time because COVID has completely destroyed my <laughs> sense of time. My I you know I I had Gal Suburban on my podcast uh, today. And I, I told this in the intro and uh, I was like, oh, this is cool. OK, so we started off at 1130 and you know, we talked for a little bit. And then it was like 1140 when I hit the record or quarter, whatever it was. And we talked for a while and I got the I got the commercial break in at 20 minutes or half an hour. And then I was like, we're talking for a while. I'm asking the things. And I said, oh, OK, look, it's almost it's almost time for the hour. It's exactly right. So I wound everything up. And then I looked at the clock and it, it was it was 1 30. It wasn't 12 30. Like I lost an hour. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe well, it's just a good podcast. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> there, eight minutes. Boom. Boom. I gave you a couple extra seconds there. All right. That was very kind of you. Uh, okay. Now we have to, you know. I think we got to sing. We got to sing. Unfortunately. Yeah. I think a little COVID singing. A little COVID oh, wait, singing. I have to turn this. I'm glad I remember. I have to. I have to take the ticker off because it screws up the. Uh, I got. I'll put it back on in a second. Okay. The Santa stand where runs the man, the Sunshine State dictator. The Santa stand the caravan. Is coming to invade her. It is a small world after all. The migrants leave, says Chris Pashaw. The Santa stands, no Disneyland. The fascist Florida.
That's Chunk, of course. I think Chunk did that in like half an hour. I don't know. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. It's uh I hope everyone saw it like on on the side of the of where the migrants are going. It said four seasons total trafficking. Yeah. It's just great. It's just great. Um, okay, it's time for our guests. Um, she is the associate an associate professor of sociology at the University of Chicago. She's written oh wait, see, I'm done. See, here we go. She's written two books, and here they are: uh, Dealing in Desire, Asian Ascendancy, Western Decline, and the Hidden Currencies of Global Sex Work, and the new one. Spiderweb Capitalism, How Global Elites Exploit Frontier Markets. Kimberly K. Hong, welcome to the 5-8. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to have you. Um, we thought that um, coming off uh, the, 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 the Davos thing where all these rich people were meeting, this would be a good time to have you on because in your book, in, in Spiderweb Capitalism, what you do is... Um, you do kind of an ethnography where you sort of embedded yourself into uh, the world of high mega, what is it? Ultra high net worth individuals and especially the people that help them stay there. Um, yes. And uh, so what, what's your take on Davos? First of all, what's uh, when you, when do you, when that word comes up, what do you think? I think a lot of things. I mean, right now, uh, many of the people that I study are at Davos and um, in, in spiderweb capitalism, a lot of the people who I study who are the smaller spiders, the high net worth individuals, um, aspire to go to Davos. And I always thought it, it's, it's just interesting to me um, to think about what happens there. But I think it's just it's a place for very rich people to network and seal deals with one another. And, you know, when I talk about this in my book uh, um, that I don't think is circulating in the media is it's a place where political elites and economic elites come together to broker a lot of deals. Um, and we often think of the political sphere, particularly in democratic states, as regulating economic activity, uh, when in fact, I think our economies become it, become what, um, there's a journalist, Nori Shims, I think her name is, who wrote this book, Permanent Distortions, of just the collusion between the political and economic sphere, even in mo the most democratic societies. And Davos is like the place mm -hmm. that pretends to be a neutral intellectual zone to ta have conversations about the recession, where really it's just bankers trying to influence the um, policies of the central bank. And so, and not just the United States central bank, but central banks all around the world. And so I think that that's really what I pay attention to when, you know, having done research for this book, um, it are just the ways in which there are opportunities to get access to key political players to essentially have a legal runway to make deals. Yeah. And we have... Where is Sun Valley was is like the American version of this, but Davos, oh yeah, is and always has been just it's transnational. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, it's like it, it it's where Jared Kushner. I mean, I I think he would certainly like to dress up and look like a cowboy in, with in a puffer vest, right? This yeah. weird attire they have going on at Sun Valley, but um, th this is where you go with your with your nicest threads from your, you know, your London tailor. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of Jared Kushner, when I was so Spiderweb Capitalism, for those of you who haven't been able to read it yet, it's it's a book that started about that's about how foreign investors um, make investments in frontier markets. I look at Vietnam and Myanmar and the story that I tell is basically they use offshore structures to um, seal deals. This was the Panama Papers, you know, but I look at the small, small, you know, small fish, or if you want to use the fish whale analogy, small spiders is the capital web network I use. Um, but what surprised, what was surprising to me um, are the ways in which those investments are connected and woven into larger webs that are in the United States and all around the world. And, and when you talk about Jared Kushner, Jared Kushner, in many ways, epitomizes the ways in which the United States are implicated in this. And frankly, to be honest, I always say that this is a bipartisan issue because Joe Biden hails from Delaware and Delaware is the largest offshore site in the United States. 
And, you know, a lot that is coming out about Hunter Biden, whether you want to, you know, how far you want to go down that, I, I heard you mention it. But I think one of the things that I lose sleep up over are here are two sons of Republican and Democratic presidents, Joe Biden and, um, and Donald Trump, who are monetizing their relationships, uh, monetizing their political ties and connections. And we're starting to see this come out much more egregiously with Jared Kushner. And I think in more subtle ways with Hunter Biden. And that's very, um, to me, as someone who studied this, I always think, oh, that's what happens over there in frontier economies. That's what happens in less developed economies where there's not clear rule of law. Mm -hmm. So what, how do we make sense of the it fact stands, that- You know, speaking of our karaoke in, in yes. the Kazakhstan's and the yes. Kazakhstan's yes. with those families coming out of that, especially there, right? Yes. Um, and one of the things I talk about in the book too is are the ways in which to seal these deals um, you know, they are many of the men go to hostess bars and orgy parties and, you know, sex and drugs are a big part of the story. And then all of a sudden I come back to the United States and Jeffrey Epstein blows up. And the way I'm looking at this is what what Jeffrey Epstein is doing is what the smaller guys that I was studying doing is, is creating relationships of mutual hostage. Right. Where you have dirt, you're building trust, but you have dirt on the people that you or need or getting something from. And um, and I think the the Epstein case really blows that up too. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about sons of power, right? You have Andrew, Prince Andrew in there as well of like mm -hmm. capitalizing on all of that, which is just, that's just a money-making racket anyway, that monarchy, but um, yeah. based in offshores, right? So yeah. it is the, the offshore network um, is the way to, pass the money through because what's the point in going to all of this effort even though it doesn't seem like a lot of effort to to do the orgies and everything everyone seems to be like let's just do it and now since there haven't been any consequences for any of these sort of any of the sex trafficking and bl the blackmail ops that are happening in the realms of power there's just been no consequences for any of those people really truly what mm -hmm. Elaine, that's the consequence. I yeah. mean, she's fine. She's yeah. in prison, but everybody's like pretending they don't. Oh, well, we don't really know her, um, even though here's 8000 pictures of her of us partying mm -hmm. with her. Um, yeah. It's also and, the woman, by the way. And it's yeah. also yeah. the woman. They were and like, that, there's one yeah, woman and 8000 men. Right. Let's and take down the woman. Is if yeah. it was just Epstein had an appetite instead of, yeah, they were running a blackmail up for probably for some foreign intelligence service. And actually, quite frankly, they were. Right. So that that sort of that web right that big web what i find i forgot where i was starting on this but i know i wanted to end here what's interesting to me in two avenues of this is one you use this phrase the gray zone so i'd love for you to talk about the gray zone mm -hmm. all of these facilitators all of these enablers that themselves are incredibly wealthy especially like the wealth managers right mm -hmm. who are setting up off offshores for their clients, for their big, huge oligarch clients or their big media mobile clients or the big tech clients, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And flushing all that money around with, you know, folks that are making it off of, off of the, 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 in the black uh, market, yep. right. Yes. In vice, right. That doesn't yeah. get taxed. It doesn't get seen. It's yeah. all getting washed through. So we know yes. that this sort of gray zone, we'll talk about that. And the other thing to look at is, how do we how do we pierce the bubble so that when people have a better framework a better language for talking about this shit it just it all ends up sounding crazy i know or conspiratorial but mm -hmm. it is look at davos this is what's happening yeah yeah it's, i i think about i have a two-year-old daughter and i think about this all the time because i i think oh my gosh i feel like i'm going crazy i feel very dystopic and at, being on your show is refreshing because i in some ways the cursing which i've been trying not to do since the two-year-olds repeat everything but it just reminds me of that feeling of rage right when you just it's this whiplash of constant crisis and you know you talk about the plague and then all, we're so distracted by all of these different things that it's hard to focus on um one storyline one headline that should take up you know weeks of weeks of our you know <laughs> the insurrection i mean when you playing in the gray really is in some ways, I think I could have, 
if I was more entrepreneurial, I would have written two books, one titled Spiderweb Capitalism and another titled Playing in the Grave. But I'm an academic nerd and I didn't think about how to monetize my ideas very well. So it's all in one book. There you go. For Well, what- give us Playing in the Grave. Wait, wait, before, before, before we go into Playing in the Grave, I just yeah. want to say, for anybody listening, uh, the books are not academic nerd books. They're they're <laughs> both, they're well written. They're, they, they go, you know, it's not, sometimes you read this stuff and your eyes start to glaze. It's not like that at all. It's it's very well done, I think. I, I, yeah. I like both of the books. I think they're really good. So. But essentially what Playing in the Gray is, it's this play, it's flirting with the space between what's legal and illegal. So it's like, you know, doing things that might be illegal in one jurisdiction, but legal in another, or you're front running the regulators, or you have investors that, um, you know, build capital webs or ultra high net worth, all oligarch like who basically pay or financial professionals, these are highly compensated financial professionals, like asset managers, private wealth managers to um, carry out their ca- carry out the, their investments on on their behalf and and assume all of the criminal um, risks and and reputational risks associated with quote unquote playing in the gray, uh, and I think that it's really what's what's interesting about playing in the gray is that you know we often think of this as you go to these new frontiers and um, you know it's happening there but actually it's happening at Davos and da- it places like Davos legitimize this this way of playing in the gray. And it's gray because people will say, oh, everything I'm doing is legal. It's all legal. And if you, and the, and the, or, lay- they, or the opposite, you know, it's not illegal when you try to bring it to, it's like, there's some, look at what you're doing. Who Look at who you're in business with. Look at whose money you're handling and cleaning and washing. And look at the people you're pulling in on, on what would be legitimate deals. Don't you question you know, the black rocks of the, of the world. Right. And, and the yeah. response is always, you know, well, it's not illegal. You know, Craig Unger, Craig Unger always quotes the, the his one source who said, it's not the, the illegal shit that they do. That's bad. It's the stuff illegal. that's legal. Yeah. It's just yeah. unethical and terrible. Yeah. That's the shit you got. Well, and the thing is, is they, what I write about in my book is that there are so many, the uh, I think, kind of think about it as this, these 3D webs that are really hard to untangle. And there are these, ma- it's a maze because every person is so highly specialized in what they do. The lawyers, the accountants, the bankers, the company secretaries, the ultra high net worth individuals that, you know, all of them are purposely obfuscated from one another. And so they'll just say, I'm a cog in the machine. I just specialize in my one thing, doing my own little thing, building this small part of the web. I don't know. Whatever they're doing over there, that's none of my business. And so people often say this is a step. It's a system. You want to change the system? And so what I'm trying to do is unveil or unravel or give a picture for what the system looks like so that we can begin to think about how to unravel these webs. Because, because what's the cost of it, Kimberly? Like what is it, it costing us? Oh my God. What is it doing to us? Yes, mm-hmm. I can tell you, I mean, it's tax season in the United States right now. And we are all getting, all of us that are on W-2s, which I am, are getting our dub, you know, our tax statements. And I just said to my husband the other day, it just pisses me off because I'm paying more taxes than they are. And I know this because I've looked yeah. at, I've, I've been, inter, you know, we're we're paying, you know, they're paying 5% taxes of capital gains made offshore and everything is offshore. If you go to any one of these private wealth family of offices and you ask them, who are your clients? They'll tell you, my biggest clients are companies. Do you know what companies are? Paper, they're paper companies. To, you can open an LLC in Delaware in less than 30 minutes. My colleague, Hal Weitzman at the business school wrote this great book titled, What's the Matter with Delaware? And he, he lays all of this out. And so these paper companies essentially are allowing people to legally evade taxes, which is called tax avoidance. And so those of us that are, you know, good W-2 employees, we're essentially, you know, paying more taxes across the board. And my husband will always say, oh, we need to pay our taxes. You you sound like a libertarian. And I'm like, it's not that I don't think we should pay our taxes. It's just that at Davos, there's this widening gap between the millionaires and billionaires. And this is something we're just not paying enough attention to. Why is it that since 2008, after the 2008 financial crisis, we have more billionaires than we have millionaires? Because one, the central bank is engaged in this process of quantitative easing and they've just been in printing right. money for the billionaires right. but also those billionaires are not paying taxes 
And so we, if you talk about the debt ceiling, I'm, I was like, why do I sound like crazy? Why am I, why do I agree with this conservatives basically saying we need to change our ways? And my husband will say, well, no, what they need to do is tax. They just, right. But they need to tax the billionaires. They need and to tax them because our taxes, what we're being taxed on and what we're paying is sustaining the society yes. that they're siphoning the money off of. Yes. And we're so the, if we weren't doing it. They wouldn't have their billions. Yes. And yes. that's the connection for people to make is like, they're not just making this because they're exceptional people in rarefied air that are somehow dividing it out of nowhere. We are underwriting the support structure of societies, of democratic societies that are enabling them to do their shit. We are and they're exit. not paying they're they're not paying for that. We no. are. No, we're their exit. And when they create we're creating the jobs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When they ensue chaos on Wall Street, all of us that are forced to make contributions into our 401ks or 403bs, we're forced into the market. And so when the market dips like it is right now, we're the ones that eat it, not them, not the banks. No. And so I think that's the part that is it really shows how we're all prey in these broader webs. Well, we're going to have to talk about this a lot more. <laughs> I was going to say really are, one thing it, you can do for your taxes, I think, is um, if you buy Twitter and your entire net worth tanks, you can write off two hundred billion dollars on your taxes. It makes, <laughs> it, makes it good. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a crazy word. Oh, so talk a little. I want to hear a little bit about your other book, and I mean, we got a, ta a, a taste of that. But what I'm interested in is the how you did the research for it, and um, what that experience was like for you. Yeah. So my other book, Dealing in Desire, is a story about the sex industry in Vietnam, and it's about how the sex industry helps to facilitate foreign investment into that economy. And that's the sum, wow. sum of it. The way that I did the book is that I, I really embedded myself in this space. So uh, I was much younger. I was 26 at the time, maybe 25. And I worked as a hostess in four different bars um, where I hostess bars. They're the karaoke place. Those of you who are familiar with Asia, you'll know what these places are. But um, I, yeah, I was in these bars 12 hours to 14 hours a day drinking just as the women were and really just kind of embedding myself in these spaces to watch men broker business deals with each other. And these are primarily Asian businessmen with local Vietnamese men or Western businessmen with um, local Vietnamese men. And the story is just, the you know, without women lubricating business deals um, and helping to facilitate relationships of trust, we won't see this. And it's and so what's so important is to look at the ways in which the informal economy, i.e. the sex industry, help to facilitate economic transactions in the formal economy, i.e. high finance. Um, and so that's really the, the story of the book, that first book, Dealing in Desire. Okay, I'm reading this. It's good. It's really good. Wait, I'm going to show. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading show, this book like tonight. I'm getting it. I'm going to show. I'm going to show yeah. the books one more time. Yeah. Okay. I think if you're it's interested nice, in nice a weekend cover. movie, um, Hustler with Jennifer Lopez is a great movie because when I was watching that movie, I just thought, oh my gosh, that's dealing in desire, except in the United States on Wall Street. So, if you want a movie, um, that that movie is great. Okay. Okay. I think it really touches on the vulnerability of the women too. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. And what Taylor. happens to them? You know, what yeah. happens to this? Oh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's again, another show. I think you're going to have yeah. to come back on and we're going to have to do a whole show. <laughs> we'll start with Gates and Venmo and we'll get ourselves all the way through this. I mean, if there was anything in America that was sort of a perfect story um, for that, right. It's it, it, to just encapsulates it. It's that Venmo transaction that he actually wrote in the margins, what it was for. Yeah. 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 Okay. We got to move on to the topic number four. Oh, Oscar we're moving on situation. to our topics. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. We we we're bad with sticking Kimberly to the. Kimberly's staying on air with us. We we get uh, she's gonna stick around. We 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 get um we get excited and then we lose track of time. So we have to we <laughs> yeah. have to be careful because otherwise it'll be you know it'll be too late. And, and we know uh, you got your baby there. So yeah. and we want you on for the rest of the show. So thank you for staying. All right, here's our fourth topic: hostage situation. Greg Oliar, go. All right. You know, it, 
it's this debt ceiling business, which Dave Troy has been warning about for months and months that yeah. the Republicans are going to come in. They're going to be like, we're not going to vote to do this unless you do X, Y, and Z, where X, Y, and Z equal slash the fuck out of Social Security. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, in France, there was a huge strike because they tried to raise the age for retirement by two years. And everyone in the whole goddamn country went into the street and, and, and had a wonderful strike. And here in America, we can't, we just are never going to get our shit together to do that. No. Unfortunately, it's, it sucks. But uh, I just want to like, you know, again, back up a little bit from the precipice and really look at what's happening here. This is an airplane. Okay. If we, if we, if we don't pay our debts, if, if, if the debts co don't come due and we repudiate our debts, we are fucked. The global economy is fucked. Even the motherfuckers at Davos might kind of be fucked. Okay. It is a catastrophe of epic yeah. proportions. The reason the French Revolution happened is because France, the, the king, uh, Louis the Sixteenth, paid for his war bullshit on debt and then was like, I'm not paying the debt back. And rather than tax rich people, he said, I'm not going to pay the debt back. And then nine months later, his head was in a fucking basket. Okay. That's the shit that happens when this stuff doesn't get paid off at this level of, of thing historically. Mm. So you have morons, Kevin McCarthy, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Mac morons, chimpanzees at the control of an airplane with a gun to the pilot's head saying, if you don't do what we say, we're going to crash the plane into the mountain. Everybody on the plane is going to die if we crash into the mountain. So it's a game of chicken in a sense. Yeah. And they're betting that the Democrats will have the, uh, um, you know, will we'll blink first, basically. And uh, it's essential that we don't. But it's also essential that these fuckers uh, realize what they're doing and that the media presents it accordingly as basically it's the Republicans fault. This is a terrible thing to do. And not only that, this is a time when Biden needs to get fucking creative. It says in the Constitution that the debts of the United States shall be paid or whatever the whatever the term is, the, the word shall is used, which means you can't ever tamper with it. That's why what I say we shall prevail, not we will prevail. Will prevail means maybe we won't. Shall means there's no other option. So Biden can just be like, hey, fuckers, we don't need you. Look at the Constitution that you like so much. Fuck you. And then pay the bills. That they have to do something like this and just cut this thing off and not make it into the goddamn circus sideshow that it's set to become for the next God knows how long. And I don't know if they have the stomach to do it, but they must do it. They, they have to knock this shit off, knock it out and forget about it any way necessary, because if, you know, it's dangerous, they're playing a dangerous game. And if they screw up in any way so that these debts are not paid off, it is a catastrophe of, of French Revolution proportions where heads wind up in baskets historically. So that's well, I, I want to throw this to Kimberly and not that I'm yeah. going to put you on the spot to be an economist, but <laughs> aren't all these guys at Davos, they're not going to stand for this. Like you can't, that's really fucking with their money. That's, you know, don't, don't ever fuck with the mob's money. Like don't do it. The, the gangsters will come for you with their bone saws. Um, so oh, I can't imagine. And I think I heard, who was it? Was it Schwartzman? Somebody was on talking about like, they, they can't do this. They, if they do this, it's like catastrophic. It's going to, our, our entire, there's a whole system, a global system. And he brought up the central banks and he said, this is all relying on the fact that you actually pay the money that it's the money that they spent that we have to pay. It's from this, this transfer of wealth that happened with their tax breaks. Uh, that they gave the rich, the largest transfer of wealth in history, right, that the United States has ever experienced was the Trump tax plan, whatever, that they were all in the beer garden, in the ro in the Rose Garden having beer. Um, that's that's what that's what's got us into this where we need to raise the debt ceiling. That's all it is. We just need to pay the debt that the Republicans thrust on us. It's, of course, occurring here as they knew it would be. They knew it would be defrayed. It would start to happen I thought it was going to happen in 2022, but it's happening now in 2023. Um, so aren't these, you know, Kimberly, uh, you, that's going to fuck even with the offshore shit, right? You can't pull shit in. You can't. 
it's going to mess yeah. up. I mean, I, Will I, it? I don't know. There's a sense that, well, I think that, I think that there's a, I mean, if you're paying attention to Davos, there's a sense that, you know, well, things aren't bad, but they're not great. You know, it's, and, and I think there's a kind of sense that people are on pins and needles about this debt ceiling. One of the things that I think about, um, you know, in this moment right now, um, uh, Nomi Prin's book, Permanent Distortions, is such a great book because it's a historical take on um, the central bank and quantitative easing. And the, and the, this debt ceiling crisis has, it, what I'm reminded of, and if I think about my own personal <laughs> portfolio, which is totally, you know, dipped right now, is that um, this debt ceiling crisis has been one for, for a long time. And what they just keep doing is they just keep raising the ceiling and raising the ceiling and raising the ceiling. Yeah. And so at some point they've got to stop. And at, at what cost and when and, and who's going to do that? And I think that it, in this moment when we're in it, we think that this is going to happen, but but history has shown us that it hasn't. They just keep raising it and raising it. So I don't know. Um, I don't it, think they're going to do it. I think I think in terms of Republicans, it, it's um, there's no way. I do think they're getting going to get pressure from the money bags uh, that they all rely on to not do this one. But they would be would they be willing to do it so that it looked like a democratic president destroyed the economy and then they try to put it back together. They'll do it for that. They don't care. There's no, there's no concern for the impact on the lives of Americans. There's no absolutely zero concern for that. It's all about a political win. It's all about a culture war. It's all about a soundbite. It's all about getting on Fox news. It's all about otherizing the other party. It's all about weaponizing anything you can to make the other guy look bad. So you can grab more power. That's yeah. all they do. Well, so of course they have no issue it. with this, but yeah. I think it's going to end. I think they're getting it that this one is going to be on them. I think they're understanding now that everybody's sophisticated enough to not carry their water and their talking points. Um, even Garrett Hake on MSNBC might not be able to just carry their talking points. Maybe it would be, you know, no, you, this is on you. It's not going to be on Biden. It's going to be on you. And you're going to be blamed for this economic misery. That's what I think is the only thing that's going to pull them back from the precipice of doing, of just going ahead and doing this. I yeah. mean, the one thing, the one thing is that um, we pay our debt in our currency, which is very, very convenient uh, at the end of the day. What we want to avoid ever having to do is pay off debt in a different currency. That's how yeah. World War II started because Germany had to pay That's the right. massive war debt and, and uh, reparations in hard currency and not in the uh, in marks. Right? We can just print like people are saying in the comments. Could just print the mint the fucking trillion dollar coin. There you go. <laughs> and we're allowed to do that. Why? Because the Federal Reserve prints the paper money, but the Treasury is run by Biden. Mints the coins. You see, there's a difference. Oh, uh, we lost her. I think we lost, we lost her. her. We might have lost Kimberly because there's a, there's a, there's a, a baby. There is a baby. <laughs> there's a little baby. A we baby. got warned on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Or she got cut off. Okay, or so she let's got cut off. All let's right. Show her, let's show her books one more time. Let's show her books. This is where you can find her amazing yeah, books, yeah, yeah. Uh, or what her amazing books are. I'm getting that dealing in desire. It's good. I've got the spiderweb capitalism. I'm getting the dealing in desire. Yeah. I want. The books I want to are read good. That. They're good yeah. books. I like them. They're, they're, they're well written okay. and stuff. And, Thank uh, you, Kimberly. Thanks for coming on. Sorry, yeah. we, sorry there was a, a blip there. I think she was going to say, I got to go. And then I cut her off because I'm a terrible host. Oh, no, she's back. Sorry. Oh, she's back. Sorry, <laughs> I got cut off. Right. Oh, I wasn't sure if you had to leave because of the baby. <laughs> okay. Okay, All good. Right. All right. So this is our back. announcement yeah. segment. We're going to do a, a couple announcements, Kimberly. Stick in there with us. Um, this is it, everybody. Subscribe. And then next to the subscribe on YouTube, you got to be on YouTube, is join. Join is joining the private club, is what we call it, where we'll have things like an after hours, which is we're going to do start tonight, um, and then maybe even some private events and deals on our merch and all that kind of great stuff. Also go to the store, buy some merch. It's been cute watching you guys buy the coffee mugs and the little beanie hats and i appreciate we appreciate all those purchases we we're like a little blown away that you're buying our merchandise which, that we even have it so that's great but tonight we are doing our first after hours um we're gonna uh, play a little game it's only for the people who joined um 
and there is like a baseline fee for that. So that just to let you know, there's a couple different yeah. levels in there, but one ninety nine, come on, join. And we're going to uh, play a little game with boom. So start thinking about now some of the things you think that we're in full boom on. This is a thing we do, Kimberly, called left of boom. Are we left of boom of the event happening? Are we full boom? Are we center? Center boom, is it happening? Are we right of boom? Meaning the big mm -hmm. catastrophe, you know, the bomb has gone off in the middle of our democracy, whatever it might be, maybe with the planet, with, right? And we're now in the rebuild. We got to do something new because this this thing just blew up on us. It doesn't, and it's hard to tell whether something's, you know, whether we're left of it. It hasn't quite gone off yet. And maybe we can we can hold back the forces coming that we've this track we've put ourselves on in something and undo a mess that's coming. Or is it inevitable? Is it happening? And are we in the aftermath? And do we need to start doing things differently? So. Think of that, everybody. We'll be looking at that and playing a little boom game in the in the after hours. And I do see a guitar back there, so I'm guessing that Greg might pull out his guitar. I think we might have to talk him into it. That you then you'll be everyone will click off and want to leave. It'll be bad. <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah. All right. So that's coming. Uh, any other announcements you have, Greg Oliar? I have my finale of season four of my podcast, uh, the Prevail podcast. Gal Suburban was on for like almost two hours, uh, which is great. It was a big, awesome conversation. We talked about a lot of different things. I don't think I don't want to share too much, but she's behind enemy lines right now. I'm just going to say she's behind enemy lines. I think she's going to have some good stories when she comes back uh, from where she is. That's it. OK. All right. Yeah, just to tease that uh, for her. Um you know, she Love has, uh, and she has her own, um, you know, sub stack too, which I'm, I'm trying to get her to do more of because it's, good. it's uh, good. That's it. I think, wait, the, the snorkel. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're good. Good. We're good. We'll go with the next All right. Okay. Last segment. The last segment. Clock is on. Okay. They can't figure out, you know, who leaked the Dobbs oh. ruling. Can't figure it out. It's a tough one. This is uh, hard. I they hired a private investigator. Everybody, but 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 some, yeah. I hired a private investigator, and he took some photos. Oh. And uh, you know, we we have some suspects here. I don't know who they are. Uh, <laughs> Whoever I should think, they be? <laughs> I bet. Uh, in fact, if the entire global economy put the trillion dollar coin on one of these three people being the leader, <laughs> we would wind up in a very good place. I think, <laughs> I think that's good. Everybody this knows Hamburger, right? game. This yeah. is, is, this, is this an obscure? Uh, it's not well, it's hard. It is hard to tell who they are. They have their disguises on. Yeah, well, um, that's because they're, you know, they have to leak the thing privately. They have to leak it privately. There's no, I can understand. You know, look, here's the thing. I think we're coming to the conclusion because this was Chief Justice Roberts and the Marshal of the Supreme Court that were doing this investigation, right, and in, in charge of it. Uh, justices have no business doing investigations. I think that's the and the takeaway on top of everything else. They're not they're not prosecutors. They're not investigators. It's a grave mistake. Keep them on the bench. You know, they're, they're actually, benched. maybe they shouldn't even be on the bench in these cases. These guys yeah. shouldn't even be on but the to bench. your point. Yes. But to my yes. point, yeah. What's obvious to everybody, they won't even go there. They won't even go there. Okay. So I've got my little rant I'll do about that, but I want to hear anybody else have any opinions about the leaker that can't be found. It's such a mystery. Are you up on this story, Kimberly? Are you aware of this news item? I am, and I just don't believe it. I, like you said earlier, they want to play in the gray, but it's very black and white. I think that's just <laughs> such a great way to. There's yeah. no way they don't know. There's no way they don't know, and they think we're stupid, mm -hmm. or at least um, pathetic enough not to continue to pursue or understand that they're above any kind of inspection themselves, yeah. that they're, that they can get away with it. Just make it dumb and it'll go away. I mean, when you think about Clarence Thomas's <laughs> wife's involvement in January 6th, they clearly are above the <laughs> law. Yeah, yes, they are. 
They are. Yeah. Lots of people are above the law. Lots yeah. of people. I want to talk. Okay. So now I'm going to go in. I'm going in on this other okay, thing that go is in. related. Go in. Right. So now I can't remember his name. Timothy something. Chalamet? No, and it might not okay. even be Timothy, but we're going to call him Timothy. Okay. You would recognize his voice. He it's he was the lead investigator on January 6th for January 6th, and he also investigated Charlottesville. Um, and so he worked with the committee and had headed it up. And so when, when I heard him talk today, it was the first day he came out and did his first interview after it's all wrapped up. He was on Nicole Wallace on MSNBC. And you immediately recognize his voice from asking all the questions from the January 6th committee tapes that we all watched, right? Oh, okay. I did. So that's who he is. And um, and he had this little nugget. He had a lot to say. But the big nugget for me of what he said that confirmed my fear at the time that I was duly talked out of by everybody who's a Garland defender and you know, I, I, you know, everybody, uh, I was like, I don't think he's investigating the, the, I don't think Merrick Garland is investigating the organizers of this or anyone in any position of authority. I think it's, we kept having that running joke. If it's just going to be the eye patch guy that lives in the hole, like a spider, like a, like a tarantula, <laughs> right. Come popping out every once in a while with the head of the oath keepers. That looks like all it's good. This guy, Merrick Garland, is going after. And we were told, no, 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 of course, sir. you just don't know. And he's they're waiting for this thing over here and this court and this thing. And it's all done. And you don't know because we were like, this guy's got to get on it. He is not looking at this as a coup. He's just looking at it as sort of a crowd run amok at a concert. It's like right? mass jaywalking. Yeah. Yeah, like a mass jaywalking. No, no, no. You don't know what you're talking about. They, the DOJ doesn't work that way. Guess what, Greg Oliar? Guess what? what, Kimberly? There we go. That's exactly what was going on. The Department of Justice was shocked by what the committee was finding because they were talking to organizers. They weren't talking to anybody. They didn't. They weren't looking at it that way. They, as a a day, a, a day of crime. Not a coup. Yeah. And I did that rant a while back. I think we even had it like it's something of like this thing was fucking organized. They came with T-shirts. Yeah, Stop the steal that were printed up in December. Right. They had they booked hotel rooms. Even if you're looking at that, they knew where they were going. So Mike Flynn wasn't being investigated. Uh, Bannon, Alex Jones, Giuliani, Jones. Eastman, Trump, any of the congressmen that, that, you know, they're tweeting out 1776. This is where Pelosi is that not being investigated. Nobody, none of the organized Jenny not being investigated. No, the money not being hunted down. None of it. Who made the media? Why were they prepared with this? With well, Garland wasn't doing any of that. This wasn't a, oh, you have to start with the foot soldiers and roll your way up to the generals. No, they weren't looking at the generals. They weren't. And then they've had to play catch up. And that's what we've been dealing with. If it wasn't for the January 6th committee, we'd still be it would be. Yeah. OK, we got the Brown Boys. It's done. They're on trial now. That's all we're doing. This guy, this attorney general couldn't he could only see something. This if it's right here in front of my face, I can see it. Right. Couldn't step back and go this fuck it. This was to the benefit of power to grab power, seize power, keep power, maybe include the powerful in your investigation. What am I crazy? Is this that hard to connect those dots because you wear wore a judge's robe for too long and sat on the fucking bench? This is what we found out today. And yes, yeah. they're catching up. He's catching up. Okay. It looks like he's going to look into it. Meanwhile, it's 2023. <laughs> they don't know who the pipe bomber is. They're still posting pictures of people that were there that they could have arrested that very day and decided to, we'll just wait for a bunch of years and then post pictures on Twitter and hope someone can. Yeah. What you don't realize LB is that Merrick Garland is doing exactly what his job is. But there's a memo written in 1974 that says that if there's a coup, that he's not allowed to investigate it. I don't know if you knew that. 
It's a memo. I didn't know that, but I know He's one. He's got to go way, by the memos. I know one sure way to completely destroy the institution of the Department of Justice is that when there's an insurrection, you don't fucking investigate the powerful people in that they were looking to seize and hold on to power because you're chicken shit. That's one way to lose. If you're out about protecting your little, you know, your institution, the department, and that's the most important thing, well, you just burned it to the ground, asshole. Out of fear. This is what we were talking about. There's caution and then there's fear. Two different yeah. things. Yeah. Wrong man for the job. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of the chicken shit club book. Oh, another <laughs> book to read. Who's in that book? Greg, you do you are you familiar with this book? It's it's a uh... It's, I mean, what, what you're making me think of the book, the book, I'm, it's been a couple of years since I've read it, but when you said okay. chicken shit, I thought it's the chicken shit club, um, because it's prosecutors who are not willing to go after the big guys because they don't want to lose because they care so much about winning and going after the big yeah. guys, it's harder to win. So they just don't prosecute. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's because yeah. there's a lot of that. Merrick Garland's never lost a case. I don't fucking care yeah. about that. Yeah, he because he doesn't case. go after the hard cases. Yeah, big whoop. It's like a fucking college powerhouse playing the cream puff teams on the schedule. I don't give a shit. I don't and give a Mar shit that Alabama beats whatever. Play Georgia for fuck's sake or get lost. <laughs> I go with sports. Don't go to sports. Our brain shut up. But <laughs> There's at least one the person watching. The most disheartening part about it is every single motherfucker in Davos and every private wealth manager that that works for them know this. Mm -hmm. They know this truth. Mm -hmm. They know about the chicken shit club. And that's why they sit there and high five each other and high five bone saws and high five, you know, war criminals and mass murderers and genocidal maniacs that run countries because and laugh because they know. What a bunch of garbage. I'm sorry. There. Yeah. I'm not trying to bring people down, but damn it. Um, it's again, another thing no one wants to be right about. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I don't even have anything to add to that. It's just, I'm really, really hoping that, you know, as we've all been hoping for a long fucking time now that they're going to start arresting people. Yeah. I don't know. All oh our, all our, you know, it's like we're all at the blackjack table and everybody's crapped out. The only person left now is this Jack Smith guy. And uh, is he good at blackjack? I don't even fucking know. Hopefully, you know, he's got to be better than Merrick Garland. I can't even imagine that Merrick Garland even knows how to play blackjack. May, well, I hear we were going just, you know, increase the speed, dude. We were thinking the problem was that there wasn't a giddy up in his giddy up. The, the, but the problem is he doesn't know how to ride a horse. <laughs> that's the problem he doesn't even know he's on the ranch yeah that's i think it's problem. time for him to go um time to can go. we get like a woman in there for once again i i, I harped on we this last week like can we yeah. why do all of these prosecutors have to be guys can we please get a woman for one why you know can we We've just had try a couple it before but yeah let's just try let's, it let's let's do, have an let's ag that's again. you know please i don't know it's, it's, it's I don't know. doesn't make any sense to me. Oh my God. All um, right. Well, that's our Friday night, everybody. Yeah, it's fun Friday night. So Kimberly, when you, when you were logged off, we showed your books again, but we're going to show them one more time. Good. Because you came back. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So here they are. Spiderweb capitalism, dealing a desire. Both of them, as I said, uh, really well done. Um, and interesting, just interesting yeah. the way that you go in there and really look at the information and, and do an ethnography on these groups of people that aren't usually subjects of ethnographies. Did I use the word ethnography right? I'm trying to say yes, that's right. Why don't we define it for people who might not have heard that <laughs> word before? It's a method of research where you spend, you embed yourself in a space and a network of people and study them and then tell the story back. It's an anthropological approach to, to whatever it is you're studying in academics. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. And usually it's like and synthesis to what economists do. I think yeah. I think yeah. it's it's um you know I think economists do a really good job of putting networks together, but the 
the ethnography is about like who are the people, how are they related to each other, what's the what are what connects all of them. Nice. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Kimberly, what's your what's your Twitter handle? It's Kimberly K Hong. Is that what it yes. is? Yes. Kimberly letter K H O A N G. Okay. Um, everybody go follow Kimberly. Um, thank you for watching. It is now 913 Eastern Time, 613 uh West Coast time. We'll be back in we'll, we'll start the uh the after party. What 10 minutes, LB? Is that, is that 10 working? minutes? We're gonna take a quick little break. Yeah. So All of like, our members, they'll be, uh, and they, they just come right back onto the channel. And if you're, if you're a member, you'll, you'll see, see us. We'll you be here. You see it in the thing. Uh, we're we'll winging it a little thing. bit. So 25, let's just say 25 past the hour. Okay. All right. Because I have it set for 930, but we'll go at 25 past the hour. Perfect. All right. Uh, Kimberly, thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you and uh, have a good night, everybody. Good we'll night. See you next time. Good night.